Welcome back to Build Day TV. Jeffrey Powers here. I have Alistair Cook right to the right of me and the left of him is me. And uh, we are talking about VPC, linking two VPCs. This is the hands-on section. If you haven't seen the first part, you can check it out on the playlist over on YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe on YouTube and uh, you can be a part of that playlist. And of course, hit that bell notification so you know when the next video comes out. We do publish every single Sunday with new uh, content so feel free to come back they'll be premiered at about uh, 5 p.m eastern so you can check that out then so all right so alistair we talked about linking two vps to, to vpcs together and you know it was like mind blown at that point there's a lot of a lot of wires that can be put together and a lot of wires that can get crossed in your two vpcs and of course you have to do it correct because if you're linking to another business you can cause a lot of trouble uh, just by not linking it correctly. Yeah, and communication as you're doing that link up is really important. Uh, when it's organization to organization, there's so much less visibility. And so hopefully you're in touch with the team on the other side of that pairing connection. All right, so with the hands on, we're gonna, uh, he's gonna show us how we're gonna do it. So let's, let's get started here. So here's one that I prepared earlier. On the left hand side, we've got my standard pizza VPC, the one we've used in the past where I've got a couple of web servers that sit back in a private subnet and I've got a public subnet and I haven't drawn in this diagram the load balancer that sits in the public subnet. But I have added another EC2 instance called Jump Pizza. That's my jump host or bastion host that I use to connect in and then manage what's inside my VPC. It's the only uh, EC2 instance that sits in my public subnet. And, and so where, where is that in this example? We would not see it's it. It's called Jump this? Pizza on the left hand side. It's in the uh, pizza. Oh, there it one. is. There okay. it is. Sorry, I missed it. So now that you've found Jump Pizza, you should be able to find Jump Pasta. Yes. Uh, over on the right hand side, I've created a new VPC called Pasta. Now, this VPC is simpler because, well, we don't need very much from it. Okay. So it, it has a public subnet and it has an EC2 instance in there called Jump Pasta. And I can connect from the internet to either of those two jump hosts but I can't connect to the web servers directly. And so I'll be doing some testing about how much I can connect from within. Okay. What we're going to do is request a pairing connection from the pizza VPC to the pasta VPC, and then we're going to approve it from the pasta VPC side. So we'll we, establish this pairing connection. Are we doing public and private or just public? So the pairing connection is between the two VPCs. Then we're going to start changing some route tables. Got it. Okay. So what I'm going to do in this one is I'm going to tell the public subnet on the pasta side that it can talk to the entire pizza VPC over this pairing connection. Okay. And then I'm going to tell the private subnet in pizza that it can talk to pasta over the pairing connection. Okay. But I'm not going to tell the pizza public subnet about the pasta VPC. All right. So what we should see is that both jump hosts can talk to the web servers, but neither jump host can talk to the other. Okay. So let's see how this works. Looking at my VPC for a start, since we're setting up a pairing connection, what we should see is my default VPC, and then there will be two additional VPCs, one called Pizza and one called Pasta, and they both live in the Sydney region, so they're both listed here in Sydney. Okay. Then I'm going to come into the peering connections, and I'm going to create a peering connection. What's it going to be called? Uh, we're going to call this the Pasta Pizza Peer and I'm going to request this from the pizza uh, VPC. So I chose from my drop-down list the Pizza Sydney VPC as the request side. And then I'm going to request pairing with a VPC that is in my account, because that's simpler, and is in the same region, so show me a list of the VPCs in the same region. I choose pasta. Now, remember that we can do VPC peering with VPCs in somebody else's AWS account. 
or in a different region or even in somebody else's AWS account in a different region. Okay. Pairing connection request goes in and we have requested from the pizza to pasta and the request is in place, but it is pending access, accept, uh, pending acceptance here. Now, because both pizza and pasta are in my AWS account, I can actually accept this directly from here. But if it was two different AWS accounts, I couldn't accept from my account a pairing connection to a different AWS account. It has to be the owner of the requested VPC has to approve. And that makes sense because you don't want to you don't want to have somebody else just automatically linking to your uh, to your AWS account. Exactly. So I'm going to accept that request, and then it again confirms what do we want to do? Are we going to accept this? Uh, and we say yes, yes, I will accept that. And of course, and on, then we get a on the same token, they can they can reject it, they can remove it later on. Uh, absolutely. For any reason. Yes. Uh, so we get a pairing connection is established and we get a prompt to modify route tables. But we're just going to take a quick look at that pairing connection. So as you said, once it's established, we could come in here and delete this VPC pairing connection. And this can be done from either side, either the requester or the acceptor can delete this pairing connection now. And we have an identifier on the pairing connection. We can see that identifier down the bottom as well. Let me pop that up a little higher on the screen and we can see the pairing connection ID is here. We have the requester side arranged, we have the acceptor side arranged, we have the names, and we have all the information we need about it. So what did I say we were going to do? I said we were going to have the public subnets route table talk to the entire pizza VPC, so past a public route table. All right, let's take a look at our route tables then. Did I put nice names on them? You know. Pizza uh, Pasta Sydney looks like a route table that's associated with my two Pasta subnets. And I'm going to change the route table in here. So at the moment, again, pop this up a little more so we can see it. At the moment, the route table says everything inside the VPC is directly accessible. And anything you don't know how to reach, you go out through the internet gateway. You can edit the route table in here and we can add a route and say that to get to 10.64.0.0 slash 16, right, that's the CIDR range of the VPC pizza, you go through a peering connection, and here's the peering connection to use. Okay. So I've updated the route table that allows the pasta public subnet on the right to access the entire pizza VPC. Okay. But at this point, there's no connectivity because there's no route back again. So what I need to do is change the pizza private subnet route tables to come back. So I have two private subnet route tables for pizza because remember I've got a multi-AZ deployment for pizza. Mm -hmm. So I need to change two route tables in pizza for that multi-AZ. And so 10.12.0.0 slash 16 over that peering connection. And it's the same peering connection ID in this direction. Save that. And then this one is my second private route table, and again, do the same process. Now, the more route tables I have that I need to allow access, the more places I have to make this change. Okay. Even in this really simple environment, I've had to make changes in three different route tables. I had more routes, more route tables, the more places I needed to make change, and they all need to be correct. Okay. So now we've got an environment where Pasta public subnet should be able to talk to the pizza private subnet. Let's start by connecting to the jump pasta machine. So it's a 10.12.1 subnet. Let's find him. So we're going to now switch to the EC2 console, find these machines. 
So in here, I'm going to go to the pastor jump host, and I'm going to use the connect information up here. Grab that connect information, and then pop into my terminal here on my Mac, and just SSH connect in. SSH into the public IP address, and then we can see the private IP address is being listed here of, uh, in the, where's my mouse pointer gone? Mouse pointer always disappears on me when I'm in there. Um, we can see that we're on an EC2 instance with an IP address of 10.12.1.244. So that 10.12 means it's inside the pizza subnet. Let's, uh, sorry, it's inside the pasta subnet on 10.12. Let's see then if I can get to one of those pizza web servers that are over in the pizza site. So I'm on the pasta jump host and I want to get to the pizza host. So let's go to a pizza web. Let's pick this one. Again, grab that connect information. And then pop back into, this is the pasta jump. And I'm now going to SSH. And notice that it's through EC2 user at 10.64. It's okay. the private IP address of that web server. So that web server doesn't have a public IP address. I can't get it to, get to it directly. I hit him. And this is where we find I have done something wrong. Because he should. Ah, I know what I've done wrong. I haven't yet changed the security group on the web server to allow this SSH access. So what we should do then is change the security group that's on the web server. So let's take a look at it. It's Pizza Web, Pizza Sydney Web. And at the moment, again, let me pop these rules up. We have an inbound rule here that allows SSH from two, uh, SSH only from a security group that's inside the same VPC. So, so we need this to, needed yeah. to be done. This needed to be done before we checked on that. So this is another layer of control that we have. Okay. So in addition to the route table, we can also add in here to allow a particular subnet to SSH. In. So the security groups still apply when you've got VPC peering set up. The firewall was blocking traffic that didn't come from the this, this security group at the top. Now I'm at a rule that allows that SSH traffic from the entire pasta subnet. Okay. Now if I pop back into my terminal and do that again very quickly, it says, hey, do you want to allow a connection in here? And you say, yes, and now you can see that my IP address is 10.64. I came from 10.12 that was on pasta. I've now reached 10.64 that was in pizza. Okay. So that's proving that with the firewall rules in place, the route table in place, and the peering connection in place, I can connect from one VPC to another over that peering connection. Okay. Of course, if I pop back into here and say I want to go to instead of that 64, what was my EC2 instance? So let me pop back to the slides. Um, so we've shown from that jump past to host access to pizza web. What I haven't yet shown is that the route table is blocking access to get to jump pizza. So let's take a look at that. I remember I didn't put a route table from from Pizza Public back to Pasta. Okay. So let's take a look at that one. What we need for that is the EC2 instance that is my jump host in Pizza and grab his private IP address just here and pop back into this, which is I've gone back to being on the jump Pasta host 10.12. And instead of going to 10.64.7, I'm going to go 10.64.1, trying to get to that jump host. Now, the security group is wide open on here. This jump host allows SSH from anywhere. But because there's no route table back from that jump host that's in pizza back to pasta, I can't get back. Okay. The actual connection between the two doesn't, doesn't work. So there are two places we could have stopped this connection across the pairing connection. One was the route table. The second was the security group. 
So it didn't take us terribly long to establish a pairing connection between these two VPCs and to make some updates to the route tables and to the security groups to allow connectivity between them. But you could see that there were quite a lot of touch points, even just for this very simple environment. We needed to remember all of them yeah. in order to get that connectivity up. Well, that was what I wanted to show you about pairing together multiple VPCs, allowing connectivity on the private side of your VPCs rather than going out the public side and potentially across the internet. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, it, it it's it's a little bit confusing. You have to really think through it. But you said you you script a lot of that stuff, correct? Yeah. So it it would be really common to have a lot of this configuration directly in either the deployment script that you use for building the VPCs or in some automation that you run afterwards. One of the models that I've seen is people using a, a Lambda function to run some actual application code that connects to the AWS account and says, what VPCs have I got? What pairing connections have I got? What subnets have I got? And basically iterates through the whole lock. That's something that is terrible to do as a human being, but is awesome to do with some automation. So the, there is uh, some really good uh, programming capabilities talking to the AWS interfaces. And I guess that would be a topic for another episode as well, talking about some of those different ways of programmatically interacting with AWS APIs. Because as you get more and more mature as a user of AWS, you want those operational processes to be automated. Okay. Yeah, there's there's a lot involved here, and uh, you know we're we're just we're just uh, scratching the surface on some of this, right? Oh yeah, we're just at the beginnings. So this gets uh, potentially much more complicated and much more interesting. All right. Well, what are we gonna what are we gonna learn next week then? So I think that the next episode is going to be about connecting your VPC back to your on-premises environment. So you've collected together this set of VPCs in AWS, but there's a whole lot of compute that still runs on-premises. And so we often want a hybrid cloud environment where we treat our AWS VPCs as just another data center on our global WAN for our organization, even if that only means two data centers, one in AWS, one on-premises. Connecting them together can be really important to allow data flow still in that private network range between on-premises and AWS. Okay, perfect. All right, well, Alistair, thank you very much for that. Uh, uh, there's a lot to soak in and 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 understand in this uh, in this part, but we'll definitely uh, we'll definitely trudge on and, and go from there. And of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to contact us. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, like, and comment, and. Uh, uh, follow the playlist because it's gonna, we're going to go step by step as best as we can with the uh, explanation and then the hands-on afterwards. We premiere new episodes every Sunday at 5 p.m. Eastern and then the hands-on at the bottom of the, uh, the, the half hour point there. So definitely uh, check that out and uh, be part of that. So once again, thanks a lot, Alistair, for, uh, for explaining all that. And uh, we'll see you next time. My pleasure. Thanks, Jeffrey.